You after something too, Whirlers? Hello. It's Friday morning, sun's out, blue skies, it's absolutely glorious and we've got a lot to do. Um, so I don't work Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So we're trying to pack in like a week's worth of allotmenting in three days at the moment, uh, which is good. It's really nice. Not so good in the putting down rain, but in uh, a morning like this, it's absolutely magical. So what are we doing this morning? We are going to clear the bed that had the not butternut squash in it. And um, so the three pumpkins that we grew this year, or three winter squash that we grew this year were blue Hungarian and crown prince and a butternut, wolf and butternut. I've already told you what the wolf and butternut looks like. Uh, it's clearly not a butternut. Something's gone completely awry there. It's just like an amorphous blue blob. Not butternutty, one iota. Um, so that didn't work, but we haven't eaten one of them yet, uh, but they look all right. I mean, if they taste all right, does it really matter? Not really. We have eaten uh, half of one of the Crown Prince uh, so far, which Crown Prince is just, so far I've never found a winter squash that compares flavor wise it's just it's just so good so yeah we've, what am i talking about um yeah we're clearing that bed what's also in that bed is a load of nasturtiums um i would just let them go but to be honest it is getting cold and the ones further down the allotment are starting to collapse quite a lot so um i'm just going to collect the poor man's capers off them and pull them out and then get the bed ready for sowing the field beans next week because we're going to do a mass field bean sowing uh, next week. So we're just sort of clearing beds at the moment. And the other thing I'm going to do is up next to the compost heaps, currently we've got two pallet compost bins and then next to them we've got, there is a pallet as well but it's like an odd shaped oblong one and I have bought some absolute bargain basement slot together bins you know the ones with the notches cut out and you just kind of put them together uh, I bought three of them um, they were 35 quid each I was pretty impressed with that with free delivery can't really beat it um, I've bought three because we really only want two but when I looked at the measurements they're 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters in a square but only 70 centimeters high so and because they're slot together and they're all the same size I bought three and I'm just going to kind of make them taller so we'll have two tall ones rather than um, three short ones so that's the idea anyway um, I'm going to clear the space for that it doesn't need to be that level but where they are at the moment along the side of our compost bins we've just put a load of paving slabs they're not very well laid they're not flat it is literally just because we're walking there so often and walking backwards and forwards that um, in the winter it gets really really muddy so we've just got them there to kind of stop that but where I'm putting the first of the new bins is going to be between cube pallet compost bins and the oblong pallet compost bin and it needs to be a little bit more level than it is because it slopes up quite a lot at the back so I'm just going to kind of pull that forward and I'm really not going to be that accurate with it all of the bins up there are all like so um, and it's just a compost bin as long as it does its job that's good so yeah, that's what we're gonna get on with this morning. I think first thing I want though is definitely a cup of tea. Okay, cup of tea has been had. This is the winter squash bed that we are gonna be clearing this morning. And these are the nasturtiums. They're self-seeded kind of hybrids from some we had two years ago. They're such a pretty color. They're actually more apricot than they look on the screen. In the bed, we've also got some kind of transplanted chard and bits and pieces that we couldn't fit in the main bed. And these are the poor man's capers, which are the nasturtium seed pods, which I'm going to collect and pickle. They're good though. Yeah, they're quite strong flavoured. Like, you know, um, nasturtiums have got a really distinctive flavour. It's like that on steroids. It's really... It's quite something but when you pickle them they kind of mellow ever so slightly and if you pickle them in brine like a salt water 
um, they take on a really kind of capery flavour and you can use them in the same way, hence they're called poor man's capers. So that's a few. I'll collect some more when we've taken the this frame off because uh, this is what we grew the pumpkins up this year. It's like an A frame of our metal mesh that we use all over the plot. So it worked quite well in terms of the pumpkins were really good growing up it and it was good because it was strong enough to be able to kind of support the pumpkins when they were up in the air because they've got quite big but what I would say is that it was a bit of a waste of space in the bed because all of that space that was between the two A-frames at the bottom was really wasted space. But the good thing about these um, mesh frames is that we're just going to take them off here so they've been doing one job and then we're going to take them down the other end and loop them over the area that I've got the Simidi wrapper growing just to keep the birds off them because they're getting to the size now where they're being pecked. So yeah, like I say, that really wasn't the best use of space and we're going to do it differently next year um, because the whole centre of this bed was just inaccessible. So, we, but we did put a couple of, um, there's a couple of perpetual spinach and like I say, a couple of chard that we couldn't fit in the bed that they were meant to go in. So we just, you could kind of reach in from both ends, so we plonked a couple in there. But now we're just going to clear it and I'm going to leave... Uh, those plants in there because they're looking really strong and the field beans that are going to be planted through it are not going to disrupt them so we'll just keep picking them there's also a lot of parsley at the far end so we'll leave all of that in just give it a good weed accessibility is a bit of a thing um, because you can't weed when you can't get in those frames which is a bit bit tricky actually so next year what we're going to do is put posts in the corners and have them vertical so um, not going really tall but just long ways along the side of the bed I think that's what we're going to do which means that we've got access to the whole bed for weeding and planting other bits and pieces <laughs> that's that clear we're going to be putting the field beans in there probably next week So this gap uh, between these bins here is where I'm going to be constructing the new one today. Um, at the moment it's been a bit of a rubbish storage area so um, we'll just clear it all out.
Yeah, so actually 70 centimetres turns out quite tall. Uh, I don't think we're going to need to do uh, making an amalgam one. We're just going to have three new compost bins. Can't go wrong with more compost bins, can you really? We're just full of, full of other stuff. That one is going to be mainly for leaf mould to begin with. I'll probably um, fill the ins not fill the inside, but line the inside with um, old manure bags just to give the wood a little bit more protection. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to fill it full of the autumn leaves, which are starting to turn. So they are coming down fairly soon. And because I've said before, we've got so many trees around the plot and around our allotment that uh, when autumn does hit, it's just like a blanket of leaves. And you can leave them on the soil, obviously. I mean, that's just, yeah, it just becomes part of the soil structure. But um, ours are mainly, the oak leaves are absolutely fine, but we've got a couple of sort of rowan and bits and pieces that the leaves really don't rot down nicely and they've got the big spine up the centre. So uh, we'll take them off the beds and everything that falls on the path, because we've got grass paths, if you leave the leaves on there, it just turns to absolute slush and it's so slippery. So we're going to get rid of them and dump them all in that bin. You can probably hear mum raking as I'm speaking now, she's off. Um, yeah, so like I say, we're going to go home for lunch in a minute, but something that I'm going to be putting some thought into probably for tomorrow is that London has been put into a tier two situation. It's going to come into effect at midnight tonight. So I'm going to be putting a bit of thought into that this afternoon about how we can kind of um, deal with not being able to see anybody over the winter because um, it was depressing enough over the summer, I have to admit not really not really that keen on going through that again in the winter when you can't even meet anybody outside that easily so i am on a mission to find a way to make coming up here pleasant uh of a late afternoon evening for a glass of wine over winter that's my mission this afternoon and i will get back to you tomorrow with my plan here we go here we go She likes that much better than she likes the biscuits. <laughs> is Saturday afternoon and I never actually got round to lining the leaf bin yesterday so I'm um, first thing I'm gonna do this morning is just start to line it so I've got a load of these old like compost bags uh, they've got a black inside so I'm just gonna cut them down the side so they form sheets and staple them to the inside of the new leaf bin ready to start getting some leaves in I could just leave the wood as is, it wouldn't be that much of a drama, but it just a bit of added protection and we've got so many of these bags that uh, just makes sense really. So I'm gonna get on with that now. It would help if I had a decent pair of scissors rather than these ones, they don't even have handles. I mean, I mean, I know a poor woman blames his tools, but... staple these all the way down I'm just like tacking them at the top because this is one of those you know like a slot together bin I'm only just tacking them up there so that they kind of stay in place while the leaves rot down and then we'll just because obviously as we are going to dismantle it to get the leaves out at the end 
they're going to be coming up so, so if I staple it all the way down it's going to be a real pain to get them off the bag so just a bit of tacking really just to hold it in place short term <laughs> There we have it, been lined. Pretty snaz, I think. The dahlias have been incredible this year. They're starting to look a little bit tired now, but I'm gonna pick some today because even though it's like really wet and a bit crap outside, these are just glowing basically. These are just, they're just gorgeous. It's funny actually, I'm not really much of a cut flower person to be perfectly honest. I like to see the flower when it's still actually attached to the plant. But having these dahlias has really kind of changed my mind on that. I find it really um, difficult to grow flowers for cut, uh, generally, particularly things like tulips, which mum adores tulips. But I just can't bring myself to cut off a tulip flower when it's the only flower it's going to produce for the year and um, basically I'm, I can't do it. Uh, so we've been growing dahlias for quite a while but we've just had uh, some pretty basic ones that were in where we've now put the fruit cage. Kind of like changed my mindset and tried to think of them more like a crop and so we've put over this bed that was just absolutely riddled with club root like it was a useless bed. Um, so we just put it over and moved a load of dahlias in. I got some for my birthday and I picked up some others at the potato fair and it's been a revelation. I absolutely love. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love having flowers on the allotment. I'm all for, um, encouraging the pollinators and all that kind of thing, but cut flower, not so much. And I've, we've got a really nice mix here of the really open dahlias that the bees love and then the more... Um, elaborate ones which other insects really enjoy hiding in for shelter and basically I'm a total convert. Is that not just pure joy? I mean I need to be, do a bit of arranging and a bit of a shambles at the moment but they'll look gorgeous at home. Morning. So first thing we're up to this morning is mum is just going to chop back this phacelia. So phacelia is one of the green manures that we're growing this year. This has been in the ground for about six weeks. You can really let it get really quite tall. It gets to about 60, 70 centimetres and flowers the most fantastic blue flowers, which the pollinators absolutely love. I mean, if you plant it in spring, you can let it flower for the summer and it's fantastic. But we used it quite specifically in this bed, which is going to be our cover bed for growing things this winter. Um, when we took out the potatoes, we just sowed this straight over the top of it. Um, firstly, it was like a cover crop in the sense of it was just um, covering the ground to prevent leaching. We've got very sandy soil, so when it gets rained on a lot, um, the nutrients just run straight out of the soil. We also were using it because, um, I've said before about uh, that we had a couple of problems with the amino pyrolids in horse manure this year, and we're just trying to add bulk to the soil uh, in kind of a more varied way this year and this is one of those ones it's got loads of this really fantastic fluffy top growth and 
traditionally you would uh, grow this and then chop it down and dig it into the soil but we're not going to do that we're going to just chop it down and then lay some of our own compost straight over the top of it and then it will just rot down into the soil you can use um, so another advantage not just the top growth of the salia is they've got really quite strong tap roots which we're going to leave in but when we're chopping it across the top we're just leaving the tap roots in position and they really help break up the soil underneath um, that's more useful in a clay soil type situation but we really want a bit of structure in our soil like I say it's really sandy so that's going to help with that um, you can let this go much, much longer than we are letting this phacelia grow. Between six to eight weeks is when it starts to flower generally, but that would be if you sowed it in the spring, it's gonna grow much quicker because the weather's warmer. We sowed this just as the weather started tailing off, so it's gonna be a much slower growth, but it's done exactly what we wanted it to do, so perfect. Actually got a blog post, which I'm sure you've seen me link to before, which is just a really brief, explanation of why we're using uh, these crops this year um, pretty much what I've just said but there's also some links to uh, where we bought our seeds from okay next job for the day is going to be planting out the broad beans that I sowed um, what was it two weeks ago well when you're sowing broad beans for uh, overwintering you want them to be nice and short and really dense so that they're not going to be battered by the winter weather and um, basically look an absolute state by string. String, if they're too leggy, they're going to look an absolute state by spring and not really do much. Um, unfortunately, we had so much rain, so I sowed them and I sowed them outdoors um, into root trainers and then we had so much rain that they were just getting completely waterlogged outside so I brought them in and literally in the space of about 48 hours they went from really good like dense short plants to being so long and leggy so I'm not entirely sure whether they're going to work or not or whether they're just going to be a complete disaster zone but I'm going to put these ones in anyway and then I'm going to sow some more it's not too late to sow them I mean you can sow them all the way up until the end of November so I'm going to put these ones in anyway they might be an absolute disaster but um, it's amazing how quickly things grow when you just bring them inside so yeah I'm gonna put them in anyway see what I mean Morning guys, it's actually not Sunday evening anymore, it is Monday morning, but uh, when I came back from the allotment yesterday I tried to record, you know, the roundup at the end uh, in the garden and the moment I stepped out there it was windy, it was rainy and I gave up. So uh, you've got me this morning instead. So first on my list of things to do is uh, sow some more broad beans. Uh, like I said, those ones were really just silly leggy. I know the answer to them not being that leggy would be to sow them straight into the ground outside, but we've got problem with that, that the squirrels, the mice, the rats, 
anybody around just comes and digs them up and eats them before they've actually germinated so we can't do that so I am going to sow them again in pots but I'm not going to bring them inside this time going to sow the same variety it's Aguadolfi sometimes known as Aguadolfi Claudia I think is one of them but basically it's a really good tough broad bean and I'm hoping that because it's such a tough variety anyway that those really leggy ones they might do it you don't know I mean if we have a really mild winter like we did last year there's full possibility that they might do it so basically fingers crossed we'll see what happens to them but I'm going to be sowing a backup <laughs> I'm not going to go on and on and on uh, this morning because um, basically this is quite a long video already. One of the things I didn't get round to uh, doing or talking to you about this week is what I'm planning for the end of the allotment where we had the incinerator. Um, I've got some plans for that so that's going to be a big part of next week's um, vlog. got quite a lot to do on that and despite what I said about uh, picking tulips I do still love them and I've bought uh, three new varieties we've got three varieties in that dahlia bed already they work quite well with the dahlias because they come up uh, flower and then by the time the dahlias have really got into um, their own their tulips are long gone so they work quite well in the same bed but like I said I've got three more varieties to put in there which I will be doing next week I think a couple of weeks ago I mentioned that I was interested in tapping into the enormous resource that is you lot um, in drawing up some kind of best of lists um, so I've said this so many times before but one of my absolute favorite things about growing your own is the vast choice of varieties that are on offer out there I mean it's incredible you want to grow a pumpkin you go to the shops and you look at the seed varieties in the shops and you've got what 15 20 different varieties and then if you go online it basically seems endless which in one way is incredibly exciting but on another it's pretty daunting and you do get you know not such good varieties and one of the things that's so lovely about having you lot on here because I'm guessing if you're watching this vlog most of you grow vegetables um, is that you know we must have covered most of them you know between us and if we can pull that knowledge that would be really fantastic so I'm thinking about like I said doing one a week and then uh, just looking at suggestions for varieties things that you've grown personally and things that you think were a real success that have kind of become your favorites because um, that's what we want to know really isn't it I've got my list of favorites but there's always always more and more exciting ones coming out all the time or really old varieties that I just haven't heard of and so between us I think we could amass a pretty incredible list like I say with pumpkins a couple of weeks ago I asked if anybody had any suggestions for pretty petite pumpkins because I quite like them that small uh, had some amazing suggestions for that um, and this week I'd like larger pumpkins not carving pumpkins um, but ones to eat edible the way I'm afraid we want to be able to eat the things I mean that's what we're growing them for really isn't it so suggestions for medium sized pumpkins I said earlier this week that I've never come across one which tastes better than crown prince so now the hunt is on do you know any pumpkins out there that taste better than Crown Prince? And what I will do is I will amass the information from the small pumpkin suggestions and the larger pumpkin suggestions and I'll let you know about them next week and I'll also write them up as a list and what people have said about them. Um, I may as well put that on the website I guess and uh, then we can all access it and I will put the link in next week's vlog. Um, and that might be good and I thought just every week we just go through a different vegetable if you've got any vegetable that you're trying to decide on at the moment drop a line underneath and we'll get a bit of a discussion going because having you lot out there is a massive resource <laughs> and we may as well we may as well amass our knowledge I think so you're talking of the website if you were interested in the green manure blog I'll put that underneath as well I know I've tagged that in a couple of uh, recent blog so you've probably already seen it if you are interested but I will put it down there anyway um, and that's basically where we stand if you're interested in any more details about uh, the plot 
do go on there as well. I've got a map and a bit more information and that kind of thing. Uh, the website's slowly building up into something. It's been a bit ropey for a while, but it's kind of kind of getting there. Um, so yeah, check out the website. If you enjoyed the video, as always, give me a thumbs up because that means so much. And drop me a comment about pumpkin varieties. Whether you think it's a good idea even to do this kind of amassing of knowledge. Maybe you're just thinking, for God's sake. <laughs> um, yeah, let's have a go at that. If you haven't already, subscribe. There's a little button underneath here and also at the end of the vlog it will come up with a picture of my face. I think I might be holding carrots in it, I can't remember, but click on that and it's a subscribe button and that's it. So, as always, massive thank you. I will see you Tuesday afternoon next week. It's not quite the same cheersing with a coffee is it, but anyway. Cheers. Some of you might be not drinking coffee. I hope so. <laughs> See you later, chaps.